First things first, I've got to make sure we dry hop the test batch of beer that's ready to dry hop. It's up at 21. Bloody hay fever. It's up at 21.1 degrees Celsius right now. So it's had its diacetyl rest for a couple of days. And we are still sat at 18.6 on the blonde ale. So that can go for a diacetyl rest. This can have dry up and start to cool. And uh, we'll take a couple of readings, make sure everything's in check. And then what I want to do is get most of this stuff out of the way. We'll put it all into storage where it needs to be. The pianos can stay there, I guess, for the foreseeable future, unless we find somewhere else safe and uh, dry for them. Um, there's a load of stainless steel down there that you might just be able to see. That's going to form part of uh, stainless steel kitchen worktops around here, which we don't have at the minute. And uh, I want to get the computer that we bought set up, so we'll have a look what's on it. I imagine that all these liquidation companies are breaking uh, data protection by flogging computers. I'm still concerned that my old computer from IVB is out there with all the uh, employees' details on it, recipes and everything. But the firm that we used to liquidate the the whole company was a shambles, an absolute shambles. They've still not put it to bed nearly a year later. So, uh, yeah, we'll get that computer up and running. Then I don't have to bring the laptop to work all the time, which is a real pain in the butt doing that because it doesn't like to travel. And uh, we will try and put some uh, order in this madness. Yes. And we've still not heard anything about the lease for next door yet, so maybe that's worth the chase. And I've also got to speak to somebody about casks. They rang me back yesterday. We're going to see if we can get some casks on finance as soon as possible. So, uh, yeah, busy day today. Let's get cracking with the necking leak pit. Right, I'm up on the top for the blonde. We've just dry hopped the... Uh, test batch, which we still haven't got a name for yet, and uh, it went without a hitch. I've tested the gravity on this, we're just a couple of three points away, so I thought let's get the dry hops in ASAP, get this batch on the bar as quick as possible. So I thought I'd bring the camera up to see if we had any uh, foam over issues once we put these hops in. I know it's happened to me in the past. So I'm just going to sprinkle in the first edition, it smells very CO2 like, there's still quite a little bit of action going on up at the top, you can see what we've got in there, you see the, uh, the yeast on the side, still a little bit of foamage going on so it's not completely finished yet this beer, but as far as the main fermentation goes, I think we're we're 90%, 95% there. So we'll just put in the big chunk of the mosaic hops. We've got one and a half kilos of mosaic hops going in here. If anything's gonna upset the CO2 content, this is it. So we're three grams per litre. It's making a bit of fizz, but I'm just gonna close it up as quick as possible. I'm talking over the fermenter top here which I don't like doing. We'll get it locked back down. And if there's any foam issues, it'll come out the blow off, which we've closed off now because we're gonna start cooling it. I don't wanna draw in any of that sanitizer through the blow off tubes. So we'll put these dust caps on. It's got no gasket, but it's just metal against metal. So literally nothing can get in there. Well, I don't think anything can. And, uh, you might get a fruit fly try and get in, but I just don't think there's clearance between these once it's in down position like that for him to get in. Right, let's fasten her back up. So we've got the computer working, we just have to figure out how to reboot it from a flash drive. 
which is what we're going to try and do now. And uh, this has arrived. Cheeky cheeky parcel from Matt at Keg Kingdom, which he sent from the kindness of his heart. Right, let's have a look. Oh my gosh. Well, I think I know what this is. We wanted one of these to recirc the HLT and the mash tun. We've got one in the mash tun already, which I bought off him for the homebrew kit. But this bad boy can go on the. What did I say? I've got one on already. The mash. I've got one on the HLT already, and this one can go on the mash tun. Cheers, Matt. You're a star. And it looks like he's put some goodies in here, look. Oh, what a dude. Threaded lever valves. Fucking hell, mate. These aren't cheap, are they? We know these aren't cheap. Thank you very much, sir. One. Oh, look at that. There's a funny shaped tap thing there, look. We've got that in shot. We've got one. Two, two of those, stainless ISO valve, another one of those tappy poos, don't know where we're going to put them but we'll find somewhere for them to live, another ISO valve, some nipples, hey, Tom will like them, sockets, oh these are thinner than the ones I'm normally using, and some more snap lock fittings, yes wonderful. Oh, some teas. Oh, four ways. Again, we'll have to figure out what we can do with these, but all uh, greatly received. We'll definitely find a use for them, folks. So if any of you out there watching these videos needs any of these bits and bobs for your homebrew kit, well, Matt, at Keg Kingdom, well, that's the place to visit. I'm gonna focus. Well, it's ridiculously hot in here. Ridiculously hot. So I've just spent a good couple of hours putting this uh, this workbench up just in the corner. So this is the back edge where you probably find, like, well, if we just pan to the left, you'll see we've got the kitchen area there and the brew kit. So I really need somewhere where I can sort of weigh weigh grains out and that kind of stuff and hops where I'm not actually contaminating and taking up the space of my little wash area there because it's getting a little bit busy I don't have that much space and also what I want to do is put some stainless steel clad in on the top of all of this uh, stuff I'm going to change that sink out for a big deep double stainless steel sink so that one can go somewhere else at some point. But the minute it's, a serv it's all serving a purpose, it's all doing its job. I'm gonna have to figure out some ducting. I need to get in touch with, uh, with the lads. They've got me some ducting, some old, uh, what's it called? Well, it's not old, it's brand new. Stainless steel flu liner. Not had a chance to pick it up yet, so I'll give them a ring today. Uh, Sean and Paul, hear me now. And then hopefully we can duct out the AC unit for the cooling system and it'll reduce the temp in here a little bit because it's searing. I dread to think. I bet it's 25, 26 in here. And I've also tried to get that PC sorted upstairs. So I don't know too much about it, folks. So it's come, it's got a password lock BIOS. I can't get in the BIOS to boot from a USB drive or anything like that. I can't get into the hard drive to do a fresh install, so I don't know, do I just take the hard drive out and bin it? What do I do? Can I get the motherboard flashed or something like that? Don't know what the crack is. Surely somebody will be able to pass me in the right, push me in the right direction. Or if you know anybody who can do it for me, I'll drop it off and pick it up. That would be tip top like pet.
that, yeah. Right, Stu's on with the painting again. And uh, I decided, because I've moved the kitchen area around this section here, that it would be a good move to put back treads on the steps to prevent dust and shite falling on top of anything that I'm storing under there in the future. So I'll show you around the other side. So I'm wanting to put a storage shelf back here and then all sorts of other storage along this back wall when we get some lighting and power in here. So uh, to fasten the treads up, we've just got some old laminated uh, floorboard and just cut some little wedge blocks either side. This is how I've seen it done. I've never done it myself before, but it uh, seems to be solid enough. And I think that'll stop all the shite kicking through when people walk up the stairs. So yeah, that little jolly. Well, it's took me to half past five. So we're nowhere near finished doing what we've got to do. So I'm gonna stay a bit longer and pick another job. Well, it's approaching seven o'clock and I'm still here. I've just had Josh from Beerens come round and share a beer with me, which was nice. But I did find a couple of things in this sin bin, this thing, that we got yesterday from uh, Thwaites Hall. Oh, and I also got this uh, industrial can opener, look. Right, this goes in there. That goes in there. Like that. And you open cans and things, like that. But yeah, anyway. I digress. Let me get a battery and I'll show you what we've got. So I was quite pleased to come across this in the drawer. Now this is a Thermo 20 thermometer. Digital thermometer with an accuracy resolution of 0.1 degrees C. Yeah, resolution of 0.1 degrees C and an accuracy of 0.4 or plus and minus 0.4. It's good to within half a degree. So uh, it also came with these probes. So I plugged one probe in, turned it on, and hey freaking prestoids. Yes, yes, yes. I'm holding the probe look. She works. So I pulled that out and I replaced it with the other probe thinking maybe they've got rid of the probes because it's not working. But, alas, it doth also workage. So even though I'm not going to be using these in the, uh, in, on a brew day because I've got some better thermometers than these and they're a bit, they're a bit, look at the colour of it, you know. I thought they'd be good for taking home and using uh, on the Oklahoma Joe smoker. And there was another one an ETI 2001 thermometer and this one takes a K-type thermocouple I'm just shaking it because there's a bit of water in the connectors there so I plugged it in and it's displaying a bit random so if I apply the probe that came with it in the right orientation then it does actually give you a relatively accurate readout of the temperature in here. But if I hold it and warm it up, not too much is happening, you see. It's very, very slow to respond. So I think this one is probably... Das ist kaputt, ja? But, still, we got one good thermometer out of with two good probes out of uh, out of a box of nothing that cost me like a pound. And then looking across onto my new fangled uh, shelf, which I really do need to uh, get some lights under here. I've got the cables slung for lighting. We're ready to do the lighting. But as it stands at the moment, we don't have any. So I've blocked all the treads off on the staircase so we don't get any dust coming through. I'm going to isolate this and block it off as well at some point and then uh, I managed to find some uh, stainless steel cleaner in there in the uh, sin bin 
bonus or somewhere for all the cups and stuff to go I got some stainless steel jugs I remember these bad boys at school so I've actually cleaned them up I thought they're good to use on a brew day we've got a fire blanket which I'll hang on the wall somewhere I don't know if I'm ever gonna need that but we'll have it and then I also got all these plastic water jugs which are polycarbonate they're solid so these are going to be good for weighing hops out they're a bit wet because I've just washed everything with some uh, some fairy liquid and then down the bottom we've got loads of trays all these kinds of uh, black this is uh, acrylic and then these are the, like the school trays remember the trays that you have at school in the canteen or if you go to a Morrison's cafe or something like that so we've got all that lot there and then you might have seen when I was you've, when I was doing the uh, thermometers we've got a whole bunch more up here as well so these were all freebies basically a pound and they were in like where I got the steel from so it cost me cost me next to nothing next to nothing aha and right on cue right on cue we have my ride home folks how's everyone doing what? are we rocking and rolling yeah we're rocking and rolling right then well in that case uh, the only thing I'm going to ask for folks before I sign off is can anybody help me with this uh, computer upstairs I can't get into it and I can't reset it and I can't en enter the BIOS or anything I've taken the battery out of the motherboard all that kind of stuff so if anyone knows how I can do this leave it in the comments point me in the right direction leave me a link whatever but other than that that's another day done we'll see you tomorrow I'm going to put on this one now, see how it works.